Hello and welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. God is good, he's good all the time, and worthy to be praised. He is the Most High God, El Elyon, El Che, the living God. He loves us with a love that is <laughs> unconditional. It is that agape love of God where he loves the whole entire world. Even though we have fallen, even though the whole world is laying in wickedness, the Lord so loves all of us, every person born on the planet, that he sent his only son, his only begotten son, his firstborn from the dead son, into this world, that whosoever would believe on him would not perish. That means be thrown into the lake of fire, be gone, thrown into the, the into go into outer darkness, into judgment. That whosoever would believe on him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Life in Christ, life hid in Christ with God. We wouldn't be separated from him anymore. We'd be with him forever and ever. Starting from the day we said yes to Jesus Christ, we become one with him. We, we are taken and seated in heavenly places with Christ, in Christ. We're hid in God, in Christ. And the Father is able, he's able to keep our hearts and minds. That's why he gives us the Holy Spirit. He gives us the Spirit that reconciles us to himself, that makes us whole and entire and lacking nothing in this life if we would just get our sight on him and get it off of the cares of our life. If we would cast our cares before him and understand he knows our needs, wouldn't be anxious in our mind about anything that's going on in the world, anything around us, anything we're lacking, the Lord says that he would supply our need. I know that we have to sit down and learn of Jesus, learn of Christ. That's what he said. You know, if you if you got this heavy burden on you, come and give it to me. I have rest for your soul. He's going to give you an exchange. But he says, learn of me. He is meek and lowly in heart. And see, we're being. he's going to transform us as we're coming and we're looking into this perfect word of life. He's going to transform our heart and mind. And we begin to look like Jesus more and more and more. People just see Jesus as someone who hung on the cross. You know, he, he died on the cross and he's buried somewhere. That's what some think. Where that God doesn't do anything. He, he, you know, we got all this craziness going on in the earth. Yet he's, you know, what gets me is he's given us a book, a history book right here in front of us. I know we call it the Bible, but it's a book of history and a book of prophecy. And this book didn't just talk about the past and, and, and how people lived their lives, how they trusted God and some didn't, but it also prophesies of the future, of that day when the whole world comes before him. Now is the day, now is the time to get our eyes on Jesus. Look to the Father, the one who created the world and all that there is in it. And stop pointing our, pointing our fingers at mankind and pointing our fingers at our parents and at our past. Stop pointing our fingers at ourselves or whatever. And stop being judges of the world. Stop being judges of one another's character, but start being a judge of yourself. But we can't even we can't do that without the Holy Spirit's help. We can't do that without the light of the Word. Because see, every time we look into this Word, we see the image of Christ. We see God in this Word. And He wants to fill us with the knowledge of His will for our lives. So that we would have the life that He intended us to have. And to do the things that He intended us to do. Once we said yes to Christ, we were made for good works. Made for good works, and he's got something for us to do. Now, I love his thoughts for us. This is what it says in Isaiah, Je Jeremiah chapter 29. It says that his thoughts for us are peace and not of evil. He wants to give us a successful end. We are his children, his heirs by Jesus Christ. 
we've inherited a whole new way of life, a new way of living, a new way of thinking, a new way of doing. We don't do evil to overcome evil. We do good to overcome evil because God's goodness leads mankind to repentance. And if we look at look like Christ, then we are drawing all men to him. We're drawing all people to him. He'll, they will see the goodness of God in the land of the living in their own lives. They'll see it in our lives because we're anchored to him. What got me started on this this morning was that I was beside myself about some situations in my own life that I'm really tired of and I don't want to have to go through again. And because the things don't look like what they should look like, you begin to lean on your own understanding because of the craziness in our city, you know, the things that people are doing, you know, you begin to lean out there and start looking at that and this keeps popping into your mind and all this, the enemy is just busy throwing darts and arrows. At some point we feel weak in ourselves to, to put up that shield. You know, we forget and we get lethargic in our thinking and just want to lay back and go back to sleep. We want to murmur and complain or walk around fearful or walk in a circle not knowing what to do or which way to go. And I got to thinking, as a man thinks, so is he. As a person thinks, so is he. And as I thought about that, I thought about, you know, we're not talking about the physical feet as much as we're talking about the thoughts and the attitudes. See, I want God's attitude. If we really want his attitude, then we're not going to lean on the, our own understanding. And what I was beginning to understand was that I'm weak, but he's the strength of my life. And I talked to him, saying, Lord, I, I see the weakness in me, but I need your strength. This is not by might nor by power. This hope that I have may be weak. And, but you are the strength of my life. Help me in, to put on strength today. I need your strength today. I need your wisdom today. I need your help today. Everything that we are in need of is coming from him. So I decided, because I couldn't think, and all these other bad thoughts were coming to me, thoughts that leave me in a rut for the day, I decided to go for a walk in the backyard, throw the banana peels in the back garden, not that it's much of a garden, <laughs> but anyway, I decided to do that and I was thinking about Psalm 23 again, how the Lord is our shepherd and he makes me to lie down in green pastures and he lies me beside the peaceful waters. See, I'm his responsibility. You are the Lord's responsibility. I'm talking about how to let go of these thoughts that are hindering us and causing us to walk around in a rut. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. The Lord is the strength of our lives, and we don't have to fret. We don't have to fear. We don't have to be in anguish over anything that's happening. Because, see, God, who's always been, who knows everything, saw this thing before it ever happened, and his his delight, his, his delight would be for us to fall back on him rather than falling back on our feelings because we're supposed to walk by faith and not by sight. We're supposed to, how do you do this? Well, it's not by might nor by power. It's not us who do all of this work by ourselves. We have angelic help. We have the Holy Spirit within us. And we have the Father, and we have Jesus who's making intercession for us. He prayed that Peter's faith would not fail. Though he was going, he told him, you're going to get sifted by the enemy. His desire is to sift you like wheat. He told, this is what he tells Peter. So what makes us any different from this disciple who turns out to be an apostle, a, a, a dedicated follower of Christ? But what makes the difference between him and us? We are being sifted like wheat. All of your thoughts, you, we've got to take these thoughts and lay them down and take up the Lord's thought for us, His promise for us. 
He promised provision. He promised protection. He promised help any time that we needed. He promised to encourage and to strengthen and to comfort us in every turn and every twist and every time of need. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. That means this, this, this I'm going to be at rest. I'm going to be at peace. He leads me beside the still waters, the peaceful waters. I, I You know, this Psalm 23 really causes you to take everything about your thought life and lay it down. I can't keep on going with this one, but look, when we think about Psalm 23 again, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil because he is with us. His rod and his staff, they comfort us. We got Jesus, the Holy Spirit. We got the word of the life. And as he's put it in us, in our hearts, he's written it on our minds, however, you know, written it in our hearts, put it in our minds. But it's there. And we have to fall back on the knowledge of God and not the knowledge of our feelings. The feelings are liars. It's, you know, fear is false evidence appearing real. And it does look real. The stuff that's going on in the world, God already knew about it. It's not a shock to him that cities have burned up. It's not a shock to him that bad things are happening in the world and that evil is happening. Wickedness is laying in this world. The prince of the power of the air is, is, is deceiving and deceiving and deceiving. It even The Bible even talks about strong delusion being poured out into the earth. We have to know these things so that we're not tricked, we're not fooled. We have to learn how to walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, God is so good. He is so good. I want to read real quick 1 Peter chapter 5 and then Psalm 37 and Hebrews chapter 6. So I'll try to be quick about it. 5 and it says, and I'm skipping down again. Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, of all of you, be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. That's the part I was really getting at. God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. I know a lot of us don't think of ourselves as very prideful, but we do when we lean on our own understanding anyone who leans on how they feel about the situation is leaning on their own understanding some um, what is that proverbs chapter 3 verse starting in verse 5 lean not on your own understanding in all of your ways in all of your ways acknowledge god and he will direct your path Verse 6, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him because he cares for you. Be sober and be vigilant, because your adversary the devil is as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist set steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brothers and your sisters around the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you've suffered a while, after you've suffered a while, endured for a while, will make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, I think we missed something in here, didn't we? Suffered a while. Endured a while. You mean this pain? And this humiliation, all this this discouragement, all this looking out and grief and fretfulness and enviousness, all these feelings that I've been having that have tried to consume me. I'm supposed to endure for a while until the Lord lifts me up. Listen, when it said Hebrews, no, it was First Peter chapter five. Verse 6, well, verse 7, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. 
Be sober and be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, is going around as a roaring lion. False evidence is appearing real by him. If anything, God wants us to overcome evil with good. <laughs> so if you're tempted to lean on your own understanding, if you're tempted to go out in there and, and do violence in the world, if you're tempted to just do evil because somebody else did evil to you or to anybody, think again. You're leaning on your, on your feelings. You're leaning on how you feel this looks like. If you're tempted to go make money at any cost, and it's not going to be good. You know, the blessings of the Lord, they make rich and they don't add sorrow to you. They don't add sorrow to you. They don't add sorrow to the house. You're leaning on your own understanding. Well, we're supposed to be sober and be vigilant and resist, resist steadfast in the faith. Resist the evil one steadfastly. And how do you do that? In the book of James, it says, submit yourself to God. If we submit to God and his will and his thoughts and his, yeah, like it says in Isaiah chapter 55. God's thoughts are higher than, or His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are greater than our thoughts. His, his better. <laughs> so much better. He doesn't want us to lean on our own understanding because the devil's playground is in our flesh. It's in, the, it's in how you feel today. It's easy for him to get an anchor in your soul. It's easy for him to get an anchor in your soul because we were born to it. It's a familiar spirit. It's familiar to us because we were born of this earth. But what did Jesus say in John chapter 10? My sheep know my voice and they follow me. Why? How do, they, how do we get there? We get there because we're coming after him. We're seeking him with all of our heart and all of our mind and all of our strength. That's how we're supposed to love the Lord our God. So we're submitting ourselves to God. He says that... The proud, God gives grace to the to to the humble, not to the prideful. Prideful people lean on their own understanding. In all their ways, they don't acknowledge God. For us to submit ourselves to God is to to humble ourselves under His mighty hand. It's to cast all of our care upon God. And wait, listen, your spirit knows the word and your spirit is going to speak it up. Your mind is going to grab hold of it. Your, your soul is going to grab hold of it. See, we are anchored in the Lord. And if we're not, we need to close some doors in our lives. Because the, just thinking about the end of things when Jesus comes and we're so suffeted by the cares of this life that we would not recognize our Savior when he comes I like those five foolish bridesmaids. The five foolish and the five wise. The wise had extra oil in their lamps and the five that didn't have to go out and get the oil when Jesus came, when the prince came and the door was locked when they came back. They couldn't get in. Well, that's a lot of us. We're so overcharged by the cares of this life that we're not going to enter into the kingdom of God. We've got ourselves locked out. We've got to tame this mind and not lean on our own understanding about the situations and circumstances of this life. God's given us peace, love. He's given us joy. He's given us every way that we need. Everything that we need. is It's in, all in Him. I tell you, it really is. Psalm 37 says, Fret your not yourself, fret not yourself because of evil evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so shall you dwell in the land, and truly you will be fed. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth your righteousness as the light, and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. 
Fret not yourself because of him who prospers in his own way, because of him who brings wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger, forsake wrath, fret not yourself, fret not in any wise to do evil. We overcome evil with good. But it is us laying down our heart, our mind, our will, and our emotions in the living God to be transformed by the renewing of our mind in the knowledge of Him. And He will do it. We'll finally get this rest instead of this anxiety in our soul. I, I hate to fret, and I can, I can honestly say I have fretted. I've had anxiety. I've had fear. I've had fretting. I've had timidity. But I cast those things before the Lord. He said they come boldly to his throne of grace. We have help right here in our time of need. He will speak grace to us. He has given us grace. His goodness and his mercy is here to comfort our heart and mind and to uh, sit and figure out that situation. He will supply your need. It's his desire to give us the kingdom. Jesus says, fear not, little flock. It's the, his desire. It's the Father's desire to give you the kingdom. And we can rest there. Hebrews chapter 6 and 14. Chapter 6 in the NCV, New Century Version, verse 13. God made a promise to Abraham, as there was no one greater than God. He used himself when he swore to Abraham, saying, I will surely bless you and give you my many descendants. Abraham waited patiently for this to happen and he received what God promised. People always use the name of someone greater than themselves when they swear. The oath proves that they say, the oath proves that what they say is true. And this ends all arguments, all arguing. God wanted to prove that his promise was true to those who would get what he promised. That's you and me, by the way. And he wanted them to understand clearly that his prom his purpose never changed. So he made an oath. This is the oath he made, verse 8. These two things cannot change. God cannot lie when he makes a promise. And he cannot lie when he when he makes an oath. You know how many promises the Lord has given us in this word? And I'm very sure that he's highlighted something to you. And, and we should grab hold of that one thing and stop searching for so many other things that he didn't say to us. But whatever he did give, you, give to you, you need to hold on to it. His word is an anchor in our soul. And it keeps us seated. It, it, it keeps us facing him. It keeps us looking to him. We're, we are seated in heavenly places with Christ. That spirit of ours is right there protected in the hand of God. In the hand of the Almighty, we cannot be moved. His love is forever for us. But we have to turn our face to the, to, to the mirror. The mirror is his word. And we are to look like this this word we trust in the promises of God that he has highlighted to us he cannot lie these two things cannot cannot change God cannot lie when he makes a promise and he cannot lie when he makes an oath these things encourage us to come to who came to God for for safety for refuge these things encourage us but God is our strength he's our refuge our very present help in trouble the one who will never forsake us, never leave us, never throw us in the trash. They, they give us strength to hold on to the hope we have been given. If we face death, we have everlasting life. We're not dying. This physical body is going away, but you are not going away. We are not going away. We have this hope as an anchor in for our soul, sure and strong. God's promises never fail. What he said he's going to do, he's going to do for you. And what he said he's going to do for me, he's going to do for me. And I believe it. And though I have my ups and downs, surely you do. 
all of us have the same thing as it said in seeing in uh first Peter chapter five. But we look to the anchor of our soul. We look to the the bishop, the chief shepherd of our lives, Jesus Christ the righteous one. He's the anchor of our soul. We have this hope and anchor for our soul, sure and strong. It enters behind the curtain into the most holy place in heaven where Jesus has gone ahead of us and for us. He's gone ahead of us and for us. He has become the high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Hmm? We are that picture of Christ. And we hold on to every word that we've heard him say. My sheep, they know my voice and they follow me. And to follow Christ is to take hold of what he said. I know that we can't see him in the physical. We serve the invisible God. We are in love with the invisible God and we know that he is. We have become the righteousness. We've become right with God through Jesus Christ. And we become heirs of God through Jesus Christ. And we have the Holy Spirit who's speaking the will of God, the mind of God, the heart of God to our lives. Saying, he says, I love you. You are mine. I will take care of you. I will, I will provide for you. I will, I'm your refuge and I'm your strength when you, when you need me. I'm right here. I was thinking about Hebrews chapter 4 and verse, uh, I think it's 12. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. No, let's look at 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed into the heavens, Jesus Christ, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession, our confession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted just as we are. You think that he wasn't tempted to fear before he went to that cross? Yet, he did not sin. He didn't go. He, he believed God's promise unto death. And he had the word that said, I have given you your life to lay it down and to pick it up again. I've given you your life. He's, he, Jesus had spoke and, and thousands of people were fed. He blessed the, he thanked God of heaven and he blessed the bread and the fish and the loaves and fed more than 5,000 people. Look, he raised the dead to life. He, he, he healed the sick. He cast out the devils. He spoke to people in parables, and they some of them got it, and some of them didn't get it. He did so much, and so much more than can be written in the book. And the same Spirit that dwells in Christ is dwelling now in us. We have more. That he, he says we had more than even he did, that we would do greater, even greater works than he did if we would just lay this heart and this mind down and understand that we, by his grace, by his goodness, remember, remember God so loved the world that whosoever believed on the name of Jesus Christ would not perish but have everlasting life. We have life and life more abundantly because of Christ. We've been sold and purchased. We've been bought by the blood of Jesus. We have so much more than we're recognizing. And all we have to do is lay down this heart. Lay down this mind. Actually, it's lay down this mind, will, and emotions. Lay down the way you think. Let the soul become anchored in the Lord. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and the only way to the Father. The one who has a clear a, a clear path for you and when I say a clear path for you he gives us a clear mind a sound mind a mind that is clear he, we see the enemy we recognize the enemy and we can say no we can say no to the flesh the devil and the world before it enters into our thought life before it enters into our feelings and grieves us and causes us to sit in a corner trying to figure out what we're going to do 
The Lord did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power that's authority, love, and a sound mind. He gave us these three things. Love, love cast out fear, right? Perfect love cast out fear. That's 1 John chapter 4 or 5, right? Then you've got this sound mind, this clear mind. Wait, wait, let's go back to the first one, which was power, authority. We've been given power to cast down all the works of the den and of the enemy. It, John chapter 10, right? Luke chapter 10. All this power has been given to us to, to, to stop the enemy from doing, uh, causing havoc, <laughs> havoc, <laughs> creating all this crisis in our lives and in the lives around us. We have power. Yet we don't celebrate the fact that we have power over him. We celebrate that our names are written in heaven. And the more we lean on our names are written in the heaven, and we begin to rejoice in the love of God, the love that he has for us, and the love that he has for the people of the earth, the more we're going to come out of this flesh life. The devil loves the flesh. He can read the flesh. He knows the flesh really well. And we must cast our cares on the Lord and understand We've been granted access. Hebrews chapter chapter 4, verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly onto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. The Lord is not willing that he lose our spirit or he lose our soul, but all would come to sit down and know the Lord Jesus Christ, his son, and walk like him. You can't just walk like him, like just walking. And just doing stuff. We've got to submit ourselves to God. All of these thoughts and these this will of ours and this emotion of ours. It has to just, it just, just enough of it. Take this care, sit it down, and let the Lord fill you with wisdom. The wisdom and the knowledge of his will. Ephesians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. So that we can... So we can live in Him. Well, this is Pastor Cheryl Jackson. I get the word in your face international. Get the word in your face. Eat Him up. Drink Him up. But let Him be your life. He is our refuge and strength. And He will supply what we need. The wisdom, the knowledge, the finances, the house, the clothes, whatever we need. The Lord's there to do it. But we must be comforted in our minds by the one who knows all things. This world and everyone in it is His. Let's lose our strength and gain His. Learn how to speak grace, grace, and learn how to walk and live and breathe in the unforced rhythms of grace. That's another story right there. But let your life be hid in Christ with God because He loves you and He cares for you and your house. Bye-bye.